it is a pageant uh, with big amount of elephants. In here, we use 75, 80 elephants. It's not harmful to the elephant. A lot of uh, Western countries people thought about, ah, oh, they use elephants, they're harmful to them. Nothing. That is our nature, that is our culture. Hi guys. Yeah, I know I've been away for a while. I've been busy working on some podcast projects for clients in my production company, Radio Guru, and I've been traveling a lot, so I simply haven't had the time and energy to sit down and edit. I hope you forgive me, and now I'm back, and I have a lot of stuff waiting for you. As promised, I'll soon take you back on my Africa trip with a ton of exciting stuff from South Africa and that region, and I have a number of interview episodes also waiting for you. But first, let's go back to where we left off. More from my three weeks in Sri Lanka. Meet Palebo, a digital nomad from Denmark on an epic journey around the world. The Radio Vagabond is partly supported by Hotels25.com. It's a website that helps you find the best prices on hotel rooms and guest houses and hostels around the world in one simple search. Hotels25.com, it's best price guaranteed. This is the Radio Vagabond Podcast. This is our construction section. First, our designer, We're in the middle of the island, in a place called Dambula. Here, we went to a place where they produce beautiful batik. All the designs are done by hand. We never use machine, only handmade. Okay. The place is called Henry Batik, and it was surprisingly interesting to see the process of how they produce this. Next, we have to cover yellow color parts with wax according design. We put this item to red color dye bar. How many hours goes into making one like that in total? It must take so long time. Uh, one week. From one the start of the drawing, one week. one week to complete the... Yeah, many, many hours of work. Eight hours they work for day and seven days. And that's just one. Yes. And it's something that requires a lot of skill. And I was so impressed that I just had to own one. I've actually bought something. Uh, I bought a souvenir. I normally never buy souvenirs. I take a lot of photos and uh, record all the sound, and that is my souvenirs. But uh, here I just had to have one of those elephants, uh, batik motif elephants that I've seen being made and so meticulously uh, being made. Uh, it takes seven days, eight hours a day to make one, and I paid... 3,000 3, rupees for it. That's a little more than 17 US dollars. If you divide that up to the 56 hours that goes into making it, that is 30 US cents per hour. I can't even begin to imagine how much of, uh, of those 30 cents the girls who, who actually make it gets. I wonder how much their salary is. It cannot be much. You can find photos and links to Henry Batix on theradiovagabond.com. But it wasn't the only time that day where we got to see some craft work. On a hillside outside of Candy, we made a stop in a wood workshop and gallery called Rajinima Craft. They do high quality wood products and are specialized in recreation of ancient art and crafts. The woodshop looks quite small from the road, but it's quite spacious once you get inside and downstairs. Chess boards, furniture, Buddha figures, musical instruments, traditional masks, and of course, elephants in all sizes. For me, the wow factor was to see and hear about the process where the wooden elephants and masks are made and the paintwork over it. This is the piece of rainbow wood. First, I am going to take some dust like this. One of the employees, Gayal, demonstrated how to make natural paint using a rainbow tree. First, he adds a little sawdust from the tree to some water. Sawdust. This sawdust, we mix with water, but boiled water, hot water. 
it get in color immediately natural oh. dye natural wood dye when we add more dust it get in more dark this is first color listen to how he's able to take some sawdust from the rainbow tree and make it into paint just adding it into hot water and then magically changing the color by adding iron lemon honey chalk powder and other natural stuff really really amazing when we add iron pieces you can see reaction color change like this. natural wood with the lime we can get another color can you guess the color what will be next green it become lighter yellow color with lime juice bee honey mixed together we can get brown color and next i am going to add chalk powder it means uh, calcium carbonate beautiful uh, purple color we can get out of this like magic like magic <laughs> <laughs> and then bottom white paste from the culture on the chalk uh, when we add this tree leaves we can get green color after boil it 10 15 minutes this one it become blue color each color mixed together we can get more colors according to the lime uh, metal and the uh, chalk it getting lighter or darker various colors we can get from this one tree that's why it named rainbow tree and the official name of the tree is is that rainbow no, tree no, or patangi it... patangi name of the wood patangi patangi patangi, patangi. I have got an email from Katie Sylvester. She's from Colorado and writes, Hi Pella, I'm listening to your podcast on Ethiopia. I'm heading there next week. I admire your work, Katie Sylvester. In fact, Katie is also a travel blogger. She does a great blog called trouncingaround.com. I still haven't met Katie, but I'm hoping to at one of the TBEX conferences in 2020. If you don't know, TBEX is the global gathering for travel content creators. In 2020, they have two events planned, one called TBEX Europe, that's in March in Catania, Sicily in Italy, and TBEX North America is in Lafayette, Louisiana in September. I'm co-hosting and producing the official TBEX podcast, by the way. It's called Travel Matters, and you can find it wherever you get your podcasts. But TBEX isn't the only travel media conference I like to attend. In Europe, there are Traverse and Borderless Live, hosted by Traverse Events. And in the US, there's also TravelCon, an annual conference organized by Nomadic Matt and his team. And on that note, Matt has been a guest here on this podcast and soon he'll be back here as one of the featured guests. I met him in London recently for a chat about his new book, but more on that later. Anyway, thanks for your email, Katie. I will put a link to your blog in the show notes and on the radiovagabond.com. If you also like to drop me a line, please do. And you don't have to be a travel blogger to do so. Just tell me where you are and what you're doing right now as you're listening to these words. And please send it to listener at the radiovagabond.com. Now, back to the show. In the late afternoon, we visited the Temple of the Sacred Tooth Relic. It's a golden roof temple that houses Sri Lanka's most important Buddhist relic, a tooth of Lord Buddha. During puja, the offering or prayers, the heavily guarded room that houses the tooth is open for devotees and tourists. But you don't actually get to see the tooth. It's kept in a gold casket. As well as the main temple, the complex includes a series of smaller temples, shrines and museums. We were there during the time of the annual 10-day festival held in honor of the sacred tooth and the old gods of Sri Lanka. Kandy is Sala Parahera, 
also known as the Festival of the Tooth, is one of the oldest and grandest of all Buddhist festivals in Sri Lanka, featuring dancers, singers, acrobats, jugglers, drummers, musicians, fire dancers, and a various of other performers and lavishly decorated elephants. The security checkpoint to get in was very tough, with metal detectors and scanning of our bags, a lot like the security check at an airport. An event like this with so many people could be a target, and with the recent terror attacks in Sri Lanka, the security check made me feel safe. Also, I almost wasn't allowed to enter, because I was wearing shorts that barely covered my knees. One of our guides whispered in my ears, pull them down. So there I was with my shorts pulled down, revealing parts of my underwear, but covering my knees. And that was good enough, they let me in. We were guided into an area, especially for the press, and before the whole thing began, a spokesperson for the festival told us that this is one of the grandest festivals, not only in Sri Lanka, but also in the Buddhist world. So it is very valuable for the Sri Lankan and also in uh, all over the world, Buddhists. So we are doing a parahara that's pageant every year. It's, uh, it has begun uh, King uh, Kitsuri Mewan. So it's a tradition of Sri Lankan people and also worldwide Buddhists. For the people of Sri Lanka, it's a time to celebrate the country's rich culture and history. Ancient folklore and time-honored traditions are deeply rooted into this tradition. And it's very important to the country's culture and its identity. The procession, the pageant, the Kandi Isala Parahera is a historic ritual. A festival of lights, unique costumes, and a heritage. So it's a tradition that is very, very important to Sri Lankans. So who am I to say anything critical about it? But I will, in a few minutes. Right now it's 7.38, and this is when the parade's going to be uh, starting. I... I asked them why just 7:38, and they said, "Well, why not? That's that's a lucky time for Sri Lankan people." And then it starts, and it is spectacular. The first in the parade are guys cracking whips. This is very noisy, and they are very talented. Then the music, the drummers, the dancers, singers, and someone throwing circles of fire high up in the air. This is all very impressive, especially here in the dark of the sunset. Every one of the hundreds, if not thousands of people in the Parahera are in magnificent costumes. This is truly like a spectacular circus. And then something I didn't like to see. The first of the 75 to 80 elephants in the parade. Don't get me wrong, I love elephants, but I think this is not the right place for them, especially not with somebody on their back. The elephants are dressed up in colorful costumes and all of them with one or more people on the back. And this is what I have a problem with. Like most Westerners these days, I have a problem with elephant riding, not to say elephants in a noisy parade with loud music, drums and fire being thrown into the air. At the press briefing, before the parade, it was as if they were expecting this reaction from us. It is a pageant uh, with big amount of dancers and also big amount of elephants. So in here we use 75, 80 elephants. Some people think about that elephants we used with chain. It's not harmful to the elephant. 
we use chains for the safety of elephants and as well as people we use it so a lot of uh, western countries people thought about ah uh, they use elephants they harmful to them nothing because we are used to uh, use that elephant for the parahara that is our nature that is our culture okay let's see the parahara I want to be respectful to my hosts here in Sri Lanka and to the culture and the traditions of the country. But at the same time, I wouldn't be true to myself and what I stand for if I didn't mention this. If you've been listening to me for a while, you know that this is something that I'm strongly against. So, I've been struggling. Should I not mention the fact that there are people riding elephants in the parade that would be closing my eyes and not addressing the issue should i just not have gone to the parade and not mention the festival at all this is such a big deal for sri lanka and for the traditions the buddhism and the culture so i felt that wouldn't have been right either Instead I caught up with Chaminda Munasiga one month later when we were both at Tbex in Billings Montana. Chaminda is from Sri Lanka Tourism Promotion Bureau and responsible for inviting me on this trip. I wanted to better understand the reasons for the elephants in the parade and Chaminda would be the best to help me understand. Elephant is a holistic animal for us, but animal we believe we worship animal we uh, we really uh, taking into a pride um, with our local lifestyle so elephant been using for the kings for them to travel during their kingdom uh, so many purposes we have used elephants throughout the history uh, for the candy parahara itself uh, elephant is a very uh, significant uh, element because um, uh, the holy uh, the, the lord buddha's tooth relic must be carried by somebody really holistic with the pride so in sri lanka we don't have horses we use elephants so the best um, respect we can give to lord buddha's tooth relic by uh, by using a tusker to take the uh, tooth relic yeah. we consider it, uh, treating lord buddha's tooth relic just like a king yeah. and that's how the t- uh, the last king announced that after me you had to respect tooth relic just like uh, you are uh, treating to a king so then uh, elephant view we use for the parade apart from that taking route to relic is as our pride as nation's pride so that's been very uh, engaging uh, cultural part but the, but there's still uh, if with a lot of noise and with the fire being thrown and yeah. the music and 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 you have somebody sitting on the back of them uh, and and uh, would well, that be necessary uh, then again the people who Um, go with the elephants who go on top of the elephants those are like really up class i mean uh, very um, how we call it noble mm-hmm. noble people they are the only one allowed to go on top of the elephant um so elephant been uh, on elephant dom- domestication only love for s- for few people like temples selected temples and also the very rich people will and a uh, few people noble people who just throughout their history they they own elephants who have the wealth landscape to uh, take care of elephants so in these houses elephant been take care of like their children this is what i know and then uh, for the uh, for any uh, labor purposes in sri lanka currently we don't use elephants anymore so elephants just there domestic elephants domesticated elephant they are there with their owners and they are just roaming around only during the parahara parade period they'll they'll taken into the parade so for sri lankans the elephant is a holistic animal and the sacred tooth should be carried like a king but why not just one elephant and only with a sacred tooth uh, so that that's uh, something people might it's think about, it's about like let's say uh, in europe they're going to have okay they can be, people can have a different idea about it but changing our culture because of uh, the current situation the concerns of the the world which is which is i agree as well yeah. at some point because uh, animals should never be used for any uh, human purposes i agree with that no doubt about it but there's a uh, the huge um, Um, cultural attach 
to this holistic animal uh, we use for our parade and then uh, it just it can't just change like that in a, a couple of years time it, it needs so much uh, a little bit of a time yeah. to make a, a concern within the local communities yeah. to showcase that this is wrong philosophy and religion is two different things Buddhism doesn't love. I mean, if you really consider the Buddhist philosophy, never say, use any. I mean, and never hurt anybody. Not any, not, not not even a tree. Not so even a fly. not even a fly. So, so if you think, if you try to make an argument with the Buddhist philosophy and using animals for the yeah. parade, that's a big confusion. I agree with that. Even I myself argue, argue with my own community. How can you justify it? But then again, there are certain cultural things that is it, taken in place. As a country, that yeah. is, and yeah. is, people believe that it need to be taken. Um, yeah. We have, we gotta, yeah. we gotta keep it. The issue is something that there is more and more awareness of in recent years. An example of this is Disney and the Aladdin movies. In the original 1992 cartoon, Aladdin was riding on the back of an elephant. Prince Ali, fabulous he, Ali Ababwa. And in the 2019 remake, he wasn't. Prince Ali, fabulous he, Ali Ababwa. The elephant was still in the parade in the movie, but no one was on its back. Now try your best to stay calm. 92 might seem like a long time ago, but if you look at this thousand-year-old tradition, it's just a blink of an eye. Should the Sri Lankan parade also stop doing it? In my opinion, yes. But at the same time, I understand that changing something like this takes time. Maybe they should just start doing what Disney does, have the elephant in the parade and not carrying any people. Do you think it's 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 going to change at some point? That's a, a huge uh, European concern of uh, the uh, the elef- use elephant domestication uh, and using elephant for the parade. Uh, so, people like you said, uh, the organizers of Parahara, they have a um, serious concern about it, um, and um, the Sri Lankan government got a serious concern about it. So, for an example, now elephant back ride is not a popular tourist attract any attraction anymore. Sri Lankan government do not allow that. In a way, we should thank the tourists as well. The, especially the European tourists, and they, because of them, uh, the, the, this tourism uh, product being discouraged, and then the government also backing it up, backing it up um, without having any sudden strict uh, g- rules regulation towards the local community. But um, then again, uh, the, because the the elephant being a very important part of the parade, I mean we can't find, we can't think of any uh, alternative. Of taking out the the this um, bre- this uh, our nation's pride from the parade, and then what we're going to put it into our our um, uh, the na- nation's um, biggest uh, parade. Uh, what we're going to do with it? So, and then how we're going to address the local community? So, uh, so that's going to be a, a huge um, a problem. The big question is: Should we, as tourists, stay away from an event like this? in the same way that we shouldn't go to bullfighting in Spain or swimming with dolphins. Maybe it's a tough one. And maybe I made a wrong decision by even being there. I'd love to hear what you think, either on the Radio Vagabond on Facebook or in an email to listener at theradiovagabond.com. Find links in the show notes. Maybe we'll have this talk again in 10 years and see where we are. Only the future will exactly. know. Exactly. I, I really believe that at that time, things going to be definitely will be changed at some point uh, for the better for the animals, better for the wildlife. In the next episode, that'll be out already tomorrow, we will take an iconic train ride through some of the most amazing landscapes in Sri Lanka. I will visit one of the sites of the April terror attacks and stay at a resort with the biggest pool in Sri Lanka and have a chat with the German manager of the place. The Radio Vagabond is partly supported by Hotels25.com and the trip to Sri Lanka was made possible by Sri Lanka Tourism. But everything I say in this episode is my own genuine opinion. See more on Sri Lanka.travel. 
The Radio Vagabond is produced by radioguru.co.uk and on the radiovagabond.com you can see pictures and find all the links to the things I mentioned. My name is Palabo. See you tomorrow.